Mr. Chameleon and the Perfect Maid Murder Case. Tonight, we again present the famous Mr. Chameleon of Central Police Headquarters in his famous cases of crime and murder, brought to you by the makers of genuine Bayer Aspirin. Mr. Chameleon, as you know, is the famous and dreaded detective who frequently uses a disguise to track down a killer, a disguise which at all times is recognized by the audience. Tonight, we give you Mr. Chameleon in The Perfect Maid Murder Case. The scene opens in one of New York's most fabulous mansions, the home of Raymond Colby. And we see a young woman about to leave. Her hand is on the knob of the front door when she is interrupted by a maid whom we hear saying the words that lead to a gruesome, fantastic murder. Excuse me, Miss Laura. Can I see you a moment before you go? I haven't any time now, Fanny. But this is important, Miss Laura. Terrible important. Well, what is it then? I want to give my notice, Mum. Your notice? You mean you're leaving? Well, I thought you were a fixture in this house, Fanny. But that's just it, Mum. I am a fixture here. Then what's this talk about giving notice? What's wrong? If it's more wages... Oh, it's not that, Mum. It's a... It's that... Yes? It's that I'm going to marry your father. Your what? Going to marry your father, that's what. Oh, well, it don't seem to set very well with you, but... Are you completely and utterly mad? This is the most outrageous thing I've ever heard in my life. Oh, it is, is it? Well, let me tell you, I'm as good as you are. Pack up your things and get out of this house as fast as you can. I'm not packing and I'm not leaving. I'm marrying into this house. Huh, just put that in your pipe and smoke it. Get out instantly, I say. I'm not going any further than my own room. You'll find me there if you want to be coming up later and telling me you're sorry. Ta-ta, dearie. John! John, come here! John! Don't shout, Laura. I heard it all. Great heavens, what a mess. He can't let Father do this. He's gone mad. Oh, that cheap, terrible creature. I tell you, Laura, hysterics won't help. Besides, we don't want to wake the old man up and get him on our necks. We've got to think fast. But what are we going to do? What can we do? Oh, this is too dreadful. Uh, listen, Laura, listen. Yes? You stay right here, Laura, and watch every door. Be as loud as you can if anybody comes. You mean father or that horrible fat? Anybody. I've got the combination to father's safe. His safe? What are you going to do, John? I know he keeps his will there. That's the first thing to do. He may have changed it in Fanny's favor. If he did, I'll burn it up. And some time later, we hear the commissioner of police assigning another famous murder case to the astute and feared Mr. Chameleon, the man of many faces and disguises. Oh, here you are, Chameleon. A murder in Park Avenue. Oh, Top draw case, eh, Commissioner? Well, that's for you to decide, old man. The murder occurred in the Raymond Colby house. You mean the mysteriously rich Raymond Colby's been killed? No, not Colby himself, Chameleon. A maid in his house. A girl named Fanny Bilkins. Throat slashed open. Better get out there. Right, old Commissioner. I'll take Detective Dave Arnold with me. Yeah. Oh, here you are, Dave. Yes, sir. You come with me, please? Bye, Commissioner. I suppose the case we're on is that parlor maid murder at Raymond Colby's house. Yes, that's it, Dan. I guess it'll be one of those jobs where the chauffeur killed some poor girl because he was in love with her and caught the butler getting away with her. I have no idea, Dave. Let's uh, get the car and buzz out there. Oh, personally, I'd be more interested if old Colby himself was the victim. I hear he's a queer character, the absent-minded professor type. He invented something somewhere that made him fabulously rich. <laughs> Mr. Chameleon. Yes, with a very pretty girl already holding the door open. 
Come ahead. Oh, I'm so glad you came. You are from the police, aren't you? Yes, my name is Chameleon. This is Detective Arnold. And you are... Um... I'm Laura Colby. Come in, Mr. Chameleon. Thank you. I'm rather surprised to see you here. Surprised, Miss Laura? Why? We didn't expect to see such a famous detective as you on an unimportant case like this. Murder is always important. <laughs> Judy O'Grady or the judge's lady, I see. I understand the girl who was murdered was a housemaid in your father's house, Miss Laura. Uh... Practically nothing, Mr. Chameleon, except that she was a perfect maid. Really marvelous. And that she had perfectly wonderful references when she came. Uh, when was that? Oh, I don't really remember. A couple of years ago. You know how those things are. Uh, who found her body? One of the other help in the house, I suppose. No. As a matter of fact, my father did. He and my brother John, that is. Yes? Well, what actually happened was that one of the other servants, our cook, became annoyed when Fanny didn't turn up to serve breakfast this morning. She mm. thought she'd overslept. But when she knocked on Fanny's door and she didn't answer, she became alarmed and called my father. So he and your brother went up there? And when they opened the door... They found her dead. Father was very much upset, and so was my brother. Odd that the cook didn't open the door herself when she got no answer to her knock. Why, I hadn't thought of that. Oh, but I'm sure the cook wouldn't have killed her just because Fanny overslept. No, scarcely, Miss Laura. Dave. Yes, Mr. Chameleon? Uh, you go to the kitchen and talk to that cook. Find out what you can. I'm sure cook can't tell you any more than I have, Mr. Chameleon. Uh, one never knows, Miss Laura. She may be concealing something from you. I'll talk to the cook now, Mr. Chameleon. I don't. In the meanwhile, Miss Laura, perhaps your father or your brother will take me up to see the murdered girl's body. John's in the drawing room, Mr. Chameleon. This door here. Oh, oh John, this is Mr. Chameleon, the famous detective. Oh, how do you do, Mr. Chameleon? Horrible thing, isn't it? But one never knows what will happen with servants these days, does one? What uh, happened here, however, is a bit out of the usual run. Uh, your sister says that you lead me to the murder room. Well, of course, Mr. Chameleon. I don't like the job, but... Just follow me. Thank you. Here are the servants' stairs. Uh, by the way, John, uh, do you know anything about the murdered girl? I mean, uh, do you ever notice anything strange about her? Signs of being afraid of something, upset, anything like that? It's a funny thing, Mr. Comedian. I never notice any servant particularly. To me, they're just faceless people. All I know is that my sister always said Fanny was the perfect maid. <laughs> Laura's all in a dinner. So she'll never find another one like her. Oh, but here's her room. Hmm. Just about the size of a cell. What? Nothing. Poor girl. Horrible sight. Her head is almost severed. If... If you're finished with me, Mr. Chameleon, I'd like to get out of here. Hmm? Oh, yes, I understand, John. I'm sorry. I forgot that we policemen are more accustomed to sights like this than people like you. Uh, yes, you go back to the drawing room. I'll see you there presently. Thank you, Mr. Chameleon. Poor Fanny. Poor child. Well, if the dead can hear, you'll hear me promising to bring your murderer to the execution chamber. Mr. Chameleon? Hmm? Nothing from the cook except what Laura Colby already told us. But get this. Yes, Dave? Just as I was talking to, to the cook, the girl's father came in. The murdered girl's father, Dave? Uh-huh. A man named Ed Bilkins. He started accusing everybody of murder. He's pretty wild. I told him to stay put, that you'd talk to him. Oh, the poor devil. What till you get a load of him, Mr. Chameleon. Hmm? He looks like a bad customer to me. Not so sorry as he acts. But that don't mean I think he killed the girl. Uh, Dave, you call the morgue and have this body picked up. And uh, here is the knife that slashed her throat. You send it in for prints. Okay, Mr. Chameleon. And then hold the murdered girl's father down below. I want to talk to John Colby and his father first. Well, John, feeling a bit more steady now? Forgive me for bringing you back to the murder room. It's all right, Mr. Chameleon. Took a drink and feel better. Well, this is my father, Raymond Colby. Father, this is Mr. Chameleon. Ah? Mr. Mr. what? Didn't catch the name. Chameleon of Central Police Headquarters, Mr. Colby. Police Headquarters, you say? John, what's, what, what's a police officer doing here? Investigating the murder of your maid, Fanny Bilkins, Mr. Colby. Oh, to be sure. You know, things slip my memory, sir. And you say your name is... Um... Chameleon, Mr. Colby. Chameleon. 
unfortunate thing here, Mr. Canston. Chameleon. Oh, yes. Yeah, oh, chameleon. Last thing I ever expected in my house, murder. Just one of the servants. They probably got herself into trouble. Queer lot, servants. Queer lot. Never know about them. But still human, Mr. Colby. They sing and sigh, laugh and weep, feel happiness and sorrow just like you and me. Only probably suffer more. Mm, quite right, quite right. You real... I didn't think policemen thought that way, though. Well, what can I do for you? Tell me any little thing that you might know about the girl who was so inconsiderate as to be murdered in your quiet home. Why do you think, for instance, that she was killed? I have no idea, no idea. Never paid any attention to her, no attention to her. My daughter Laura runs the house. You better ask her. I did, and she told me just as little as you and your son John have, Mr. Colby. But I'll... Mr. Chameleon. Yes, Dave? You'd better come downstairs and talk to the man I told you was here. He's got something for you, something plenty hot. What, what man, Mr. Comedian? After I see him, I'll tell you, John. He's going to tear this case wide open, John. Wide open. Te tear it open, Detective Arnold? That's ridiculous. Never mind, never mind, son. I fancy it's someone of Fanny's own class, and that it'll all turn out that a grocer's clerk or delivery boy killed Fanny. Perhaps, Mr. Colby. I'll see you later, Mr. Colby. John. Get Laura in here right away. What for, Father? If you don't manage to hold yourself in, you and Laura will find yourselves up on a murder charge. Our Mr. Chameleon's one of the most penetrating men I've ever met. Up to the time you revealed excitement, our story was going down perfectly. Now be careful, my boy. I beg of you. I don't want to see my children convicted of murder. What did the murdered girl's father tell you, Dave, to make you think he'd break this case wide open? Uh, you better hear it from his own lips, Mr. Chameleon. Uh -oh. He's here in the butler's pantry. Oh, all right, Dave. Mr. Bilkins, here's Mr. Chameleon. Now tell him what you told me. It's, it's fair terrible I ever brought my innocent daughter to this country, Mr. Chameleon. That's how she was done in. What do you mean, Mr. Bilkins, brought her to this country? Didn't this here busy tell you, Mr. Comedian? Detective Arnold wanted me to hear the story direct from you, Bilkins. Now, let's have it, please. Uh, Fanny and me come from Australia, where we should have stayed. And then she'd never have gone into service in this old duffer's house. Well, I still don't know what you mean, Bilkins. What I'm trying to drive home, sir, is that Fanny wouldn't have got herself engaged to marry the old man. Do you mean to say that your daughter, Fanny, was going to marry Raymond Colby? I'm not lying when I say it, Mr. Comedian. I, I warned her proper about marrying out of her class. But Fanny had got American ideas into her head quick. Wouldn't listen to her father. And it, it all wound up in her being killed. Butchered like an animal. Are you certain that your daughter was going to marry this fabulously rich man? Uh, look here. Here's her wedding license, Mr. Comedian. Uh -huh. She gave it to me, saying Mr. Colby didn't want it round the house. Fear his son or daughter might find it. But they, they must have caught on some other way, sir. And that's why they... They killed her. Dave, this is astounding. This license is genuine. Fanny Bilkins, age 24, Raymond Colby, 56. It's on the up all right, Mr. Comedian. I had it checked myself. I'm mm. taking the blame for Fanny's murder on myself, Mr. Comedian. I'm her father. Oh, I should have given her a good thump and I made her leave this house. The likes of her thinking of Mary and the likes of him. I always say that everyone stay in his own class. Mr. Bilkins, come with me. Who? Where to, sir? Upstairs to the drawing room, where I think we'll find Mr. Colby and his son, John. Uh, uh, don't make me face him now, Mr. Comedian. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't face my daughter's dirty murderers. I, I can't do it, sir. I can't. I understand, Bilkins. You wait here, then. Detective Arnold and I will go up alone. Uh, you, you're a real gentleman, sir. Thank you. I'll never forget your kindness, sir. Dave, come along. If ever I saw one for the book, Mr. Chameleon, this is it. If it's true, Dave, if it's true. What? Well, don't you believe it? You saw the marriage license, didn't you? Yes, indeed, Dave. And I also saw the shifty look in the bereaved Mr. Bilkins' eyes. If I were looking for a babysitter, I'd, uh... And it wouldn't be Bilkins. Now, here's the drawing room now. I expected to find your father and brother here. Uh, they're in father's study, Mr. Chameleon. I've just talked to your murdered maid's father. So they have fathers, too. Just as you and I, Laura. But uh, tell me. Yes. When was your father, Raymond Colby, going to marry Fanny Bilkins? <laughs> oh, I didn't realize detectives on duty kidded people, Mr. Chameleon. Then you didn't know? 
Know what? You know what. Answer the question. If you expect me to answer a ridiculous question like that, Mr. Chameleon... Are you serious? Imagine Father marrying a housemaid. It's too, too silly. That the door to the study, Laura? Well, yes. I'll tell Father you want to see him. Don't trouble, thank you. I'll go in alone. And you stay here. I hope I'm not interrupting, Mr. Colby. Oh. I see you have your safe open. Something lost? Well, Father has an idea he misplaced his will, Mr. Chameleon. I'm on the forgetful side, Mr. Chameleon. I'll find it later. Uh, why not look in the fireplace, Mr. Colby? Wait a second. In, in the fireplace, Mr. Chameleon? Yes, John. Yes, here is what is left of your father's will. All but the top and away, though. Uh, do you mind telling me why you tried to destroy it, John? My son didn't, Mr. Chameleon. Probably did it myself. I, I do such utterly stupid things without thinking. Like arranging to marry your housemaid, Mr. Colby? Oh, what is this, Mr. Chameleon? Father planning to marry that... That, that murdered girl, John. Murdered. Oh, Mr. Chameleon, what in heaven's name gives you the idea Father was going to marry her? Uh, this uh, marriage license, John. Ma marriage license? John, I told you before that Mr. Chameleon was a very penetrating man. Trying to deceive him would be unfair to him and us. Then you were going to marry her, Mr. Colbin. Oh, no, no. Not at all, Mr. Chameleon. I simply, I, uh... Well, I really don't know why I took out that marriage license. Well, I'm sure it wasn't done simply to keep a perfect maid. Come, Mr. Colby, don't you think it's time to stop trying to protect your children? Why should he try to protect Laura and me, Mr. Chameleon? We didn't kill that girl. In my entire experience, I've never met with a clearer motive for murder. Never. Dave? Right here, Mr. Chameleon. Oh. What do we do, arrest John and Laura? Uh, no, not now, Dave. Bring the murdered girl's father in here immediately, and then we'll... That's what I came up here to tell you, Mr. Chameleon. Wilkins slipped out of the house while I went into the kitchen to get a drink of water. What? I sent out a general alarm for him. Have this house guarded, Dave. And get this straight, Mr. Colby. If either your son or daughter attempts to leave here, they'll be taken in on suspicion of willful murder. Mr. Chameleon and the Perfect Maid murder case continues in just a moment. When you have a cold, you need Bayer aspirin. Need it because it's important to you that you get quick relief from the headachey, feverish feeling and the muscular aches and pains that almost always accompany a cold. And because Bayer aspirin gives you this important relief, it should be taken at the first sign of a cold before you do anything else. Regardless of what you do to stop or shorten a cold, we believe your own doctor will tell you that this is sound advice. And it's advice you can follow with confidence, for Bayer aspirin is used by millions to treat these distressing symptoms. It provides amazingly fast relief, makes you feel better, because it's ready to go to work in two seconds. And its single active ingredient is so gentle to the system that doctors prescribe it even for small children. That's why it's been used by millions of normal people without ill effect. So at the first sign of a cold... Before you do anything else, take Bayer Aspirin. When you buy, ask for Bayer Aspirin, not just for aspirin alone. Get the 100-tablet bottle and you get Bayer Aspirin tablets for less than a penny apiece. And now back to Mr. Chameleon and the Perfect Maid murder case. Fanny Bilkins has been viciously murdered in the home of wealthy Raymond Colby, where she worked as a housemaid. Mr. Chameleon has discovered that Colby had planned to marry Fanny in spite of the bitter protests of his son John and his daughter Laura. During the investigation, the murdered girl's father, Edward Bilkins, has disappeared from the Colby home. But an hour later, when Mr. Chameleon impatiently paces his office at headquarters, he suddenly finds that no general alarm was required to bring in Bilkins. For a strange surprise awaits him as Detective Dave Arnold rushes into his office saying, Mr. Chameleon, hmm? I just brought in Fanny Bilkin's father in an ambulance. In an ambulance, Dave? He's got a knife cut straight down his left cheek. Hmm. Didn't miss his throat by half an inch. But the ambulance doc patched him up on the way in and now he's squawking loud to see you. He says... Get him in here, Dave. Come in, Bilkins. Bilkins, what happened? Who tried to get you? Now get down to the point without wasting words. Uh, very good, sir. But it was a near one. Not satisfied with cruelly murdering my daughter Fanny. Who? Raymond Colby. 
Well, I, I, I mean his, his son, John. But it, the, the fact is, I, I don't know for where sure. Where did the attack take place, Bilkins? In, in the old Duffer's study, that's where. What were you doing there? Uh, nothing, sir, nothing. Just uh, nosing around. It won't do Bilkins out with it. Mr. Chameleon, here's a bag the boys took off Bilkins on the way in. Uh, yeah. Give it to me, Mr. Copper. I, I, I never seen it before. It, uh, it, uh, Fanny gave it to me. Looks like about a half million in jewels, Bilkins. And they look familiar. Very familiar. But I, I don't know anything about them. Dave, I... put Bilkins on detention. I got the answer to this case. Now, look here, Chameleon. I got rights. Those jewels were planted Come on along, me. Come along, Bilkins. Chose your own daughter, did you? I'll be right back, Mr. Chameleon. Right on. Hello? Mr. Chameleon, this is John Colby. Yes? Most of my dead mother's jewelry has been stolen. Who discovered the loss, John? Our butler did. Caught the robber in the act, but he got away. Can you come out here right away? Uh, not just now, John. Uh, you said only part of your mother's jewelry was stolen? The butler came in the room just in time to save the rest. Um, I have got the stolen jewels, John. And the robber, too. You've got the jewels and the robber both? I'm pretty positive I have, John. But um, I want to make sure before I definitely charge the man that we're holding. Well, what do you mean, Mr. Chameleon? Instead of coming myself, John, I'm going to send one of our expert jewel men out there. And he'll bring the jewels I have here out, too, for identification. I wish you'd come yourself, Mr. Chameleon, instead of... What, what's that, Father? All right, I'll ask Mr. Chameleon. Sorry, Mr. Chameleon, but Father suggests... Yes? Father's worried about anybody coming but you, Mr. Chameleon. So is my sister, Laura. Can't you come yourself? I'm sorry, I'm not a jewel expert. I'm sending our head man, Pierre Antoine, out right away. And then I'll follow later. Goodbye, John. What's all that about, Mr. Chameleon? Are you going out to Colby's in disguise? Right you are, Dave. Disguised as Pierre Antoine, the police department's chief man on jewels. Now you will come with me. And the instant we get there and you introduce me, arrest John and Laura Colby on my orders. Well, orders are orders, but I don't get you, Mr. Chameleon. Why not pinch them and be done with it? Because I need the evidence. I think their father, Raymond Colby, will give me, Dave. And so, a little later, we find Detective Arnold with Mr. Chameleon in his disguise as Pierre Antoine at the murder house, as Dave Arnold says. Evening, everybody. This gentleman is the police department's jewel expert. Mr. Chameleon sent him out. Pierre Antoine at your service. Uh, you, uh, Mr. Raymond Colby, monsieur? Yes, yes, Mr. Uh, Antoine. This is my daughter, Laura. Mademoiselle. How do you do? And uh, my son, John. Monsieur Jean. Uh, may we all sit down? Or uh, perhaps you, Mademoiselle Laura, would be so kind as to bring the remaining jewels from the uh, robbery for me to see? Sorry, Monsieur Antoine, but Mr. Chameleon ordered me to arrest this lady and her brother and bring them back to headquarters. Uh, that is absurd, Detective Arnold. Surely Mr. Uh, Chameleon is making a mistake. Mr. Chameleon is a fool. We won't go, Laura. Detective Arnold can't arrest us without a warrant. Here's the warrant, John. Better come quietly. Uh, John, John, you, you can only cause yourself and Laura trouble by not going with Detective Arnold. But, Father... You've got the right idea, Mr. Colby. Now, come on, John and Laura. No point getting tough about it. Uh, my compliment to uh, Mr. Chameleon, uh, Detective Arnold. And uh, be good enough to express my opinion that he is making a most stupid blunder. You're arresting two such charming young people. Stupid or not, I'm taking them, Monsieur Antoine. Good night. Good night. Oh, a dreadful contretemps, Monsieur Colby. I thought better of that uh, chameleon. But there is your police mind. Uh, Mr. Antoine, did you bring the jewels recovered from the man who robbed my safe? In this very bag, Monsieur Colby, the uh, robber was the father of the housemaid murdered here today. Your uh, fiancé, I'm told. Hand over those jewels, chameleon. What? Shut up, chameleon. I'm doing the talking now. Give me that bag, quick. They're the only evidence you've got that I killed that infernal housemaid, Fanny Bilkins. Now let's have them. When I take you in, Raymond Colby, it'll be for two murders. But, um... Anyway, here are the jewels. You're not taking me in. No? By the time they find your body, chameleon, I'll be out of the country. Got any last wishes, cop? Mm-hmm. 
I'd like to tell you how I caught up with you, Raymond Colby. I'm interested, but hold your gab to three minutes. Through a careful study of police records extending from New York to Sydney, Australia. You murdered the woman who owned those jewels, Lady Ashton Burl, in Australia five years ago. That's past history, Chameleon, but suppose I did. The one living man who knew you did was your murdered housemaid's father, a petty criminal named Ed Bilkins. And he followed you here, forced you to hire his daughter Fanny as a maid in your house, and then blackmailed you into a promise to marry her with your mysteriously and criminally acquired wealth. Anything else, Chameleon? You've got 30 seconds left. Only this, Raymond. Don't move, Colby. You hear me, Colby? I said don't move. That's odd. He doesn't answer. Colby? What? Mm. Oh, why did I have to become a policeman? Police headquarters? This is Chameleon. Connect me with Detective Arnold, please. Dave? Listen, Dave. Send the dead wagon out, please. Yes, the dead wagon. Well, I'm afraid I killed a man. Yes, the murderer of Fanny Bilkins. I hit a fatal spot by mistake. I know, Dave, it's all in the line of duty, but still... And with these words, Mr. Chameleon concludes tonight's murder case. Have you ever tried breaking an aspirin tablet to give your children the dosage your doctor has prescribed? If you have, then you'll appreciate the new children's size Bayer aspirin tablets. These tablets are genuine Bayer aspirin but they contain only half the amount of the regular size Bayer aspirin tablets, and thus you can give your child the proper dosage as prescribed by your physician, and you can do it conveniently. And because they're made so you can break them right in half, it's also easy for you to give still smaller dosages whenever necessary. Another thing you'll appreciate is that they're uncolored and unflavored and therefore cannot be mistaken for candy, and you can use them with confidence. For the fact that doctors prescribe Bayer aspirin single active ingredient even for the smallest children shows how gentle and dependable it is. The bottle and carton are plainly marked children's size Bayer aspirin. 30 tablets for 25 cents. next Wednesday night at this same time for Mr. Chameleon, the man of many faces, in The Greenhouse Murder Case. The part of Mr. Chameleon is played by Carl Swenson, with dialogue by Frank Hummert, from the original story by Frank and Ann Hummert, music directed by Victor Arden. The members of our cast join with our sponsors in wishing all their listeners a Merry Christmas. Your announcer is Howard Claney.